Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, I'm going to talk about the stack memory. What is stack memory? How do we manage the stack memory? What are the best practices and how to debug if you have some issues with the stack memory? Let's get started. So before going into the stack memory, it is important to understand the term Java threads. Java works with threads. What do you mean by thread? A simple example can be, let's say, you have a Java application and the user does some actions. They need to post some action to the server. It happens via thread. In Pega application, if you want to relate, let's say I am a user, so I have a session for me, right? Then I go to the Pega application, I do some action in the application, I click some submit. So it makes some server call, it posts something into the server, right? That happens via a thread. And for any web server, multi-threading is commonly used. Why multi-threading is commonly used? Of course, because a lot of users will be using that server. A lot of users will be using the Pega application, right? So I may be using, you may be using. So we will have separate threads that access the server. And this is very, very common for all the web servers. So multi-threading is always been there. Now let's talk more about this multi-threading. So what benefit or feature it provides is you will have some independent processing. I will have my own processing with my own Java thread context and you will have your own Java thread context processing, right? So you have some individual processing for each of the records. And then we can also configure the thread pool because at the end, you don't need to have multiple threads keeping the servers busy. So you can always configure a thread pool saying like you can have this much amounts of threads, active threads thread pool in the sense it is a common term you will also find the same thing like connection pool for the database right so you will have some place where you can have the unused threads go into that so it can be reused so thread pooling can also be configured and then you can also think about the asynchronous processing and the user experience what i meant by this is let me get to the second point let me first talk about this the single threaded session module Again, I just logged in. So I have my own user session. So I have a thread. I send some records to the server. If I want to send the next request, what it happens is it always behaves a single threaded session module. It means the previous thread, the previous request should complete. Only then I can send the next request. You might have definitely seen this in the Pega Designer Studio. You might have running some report or doing some screen in the Designer Studio. It takes a long. By then, if you try to click on a different location, definitely it will not work, right? Because a thread is already busy sending some records to the server. So how to tackle this is you can also use some asynchronous processing. You can branch out some specific thread. We do that in the activity. We can branch out. We can do some child requesters processing. We can queue something to the background agent to processing. So all these can also help with the user experience, right? Definitely. You don't want to do everything in a sequential manner and then keep waiting till the screen gets loaded. You can also use this asynchronous processing. So keep it in mind. Pega, the backend, it uses Java threads. So every request goes via threads. For a user session, you can have a single threaded session. Of course, you can design to have some asynchronous threads. Okay, now threads are clear. So why I mentioned these threads into the stack memory lecture? You may have this question, right? You will be getting cleared with this. The stack memory, right? It helps with the memory management on the execution of a thread. What do you mean by that? I send a request, I create a new thread. And this thread needs some memory space, right? Because I may need to run some activity. That activity can use a lot of methods and a lot of local variables. So that should be some memory space allocated for those threads. And stack memory helps with the memory management, which in turn implies that each thread will have its own stack. Stack, you can think it of like a pile of books which you arrange in your desk. And the stack is also organized as frames. Just like each individual book, you will also have frames into the stack memory. So what does this frame actually meant? just recall the activity in an activity you may have methods right that method you can use call method to call another activity right so what it means is you have a frame that frame calls another frame the call activity so that frame is not completed yet so that is going to stay in the stack and then you add another frame so all these methods get stacked in let's say these methods are getting stacked and the called activity is completed. As soon as the method is completed, then it removes from the stack. So that is why it uses last in first out. So last in first out in the sense like it keeps calling, calling, calling. And when, when some call methods or things are completed, it keeps removing. So when every method is completed, it means our processing is completed, right? So this is how 
java manages the stack memory and everything happens within the java you don't need to code or do anything it happens out of the box so just remember each frame in the stack it holds to the method call it holds all the local variables and the written values that are used for the method invocation so stack memory definitely you should start with a thread and then each thread has a stack and then you also have the frames now here if you look i just summarize everything whatever i explain in a pega application when a user sends a server request a java thread gets created and then sending a server request definitely it will involve some java methods and each java method creates a new stack frame and then it keep pushing to the running thread right the stack of the running thread it keeps getting added and each stack it holds all the necessary details and it gets destroyed when the method is complete okay and now we can look at some basic configurations which we can do from our end so the configuration is you can define the stack size in using your jvm setting so you can define x s s and then set some size for us but most of the java implementations they have their own default size and i haven't seen in a project in a pega project where we set this stack size we do set the heap memory size of course we always do that but stack size you can use your own jvm implementation and the next important thing is whenever the method invocation right if it exceeds the stack size then you are going to get stack overflow error let me explain you from design studio you will understand more in detail Okay, here I have logged in into the Dismiss Studio, and I created two simple activities. The first is uh, this is my one activity, and it calls another activity. So it uses a method. Method refers to a frame, right? So let's say if I execute this activity, this will be the first method call. This will be added to the frame, and then it calls another activity, right? It goes to the method of the next activity. And here, what I did is this is the very worst way of coding, and no one will. normally in real time do that but i just want to show you how this stack overflow occurs if you have lot of nested methods getting called there are chances that your stack can overflow so i just want to show you that is the reason i again call the second activity so this method the second frame it gets added to the stack right and it calls here then again the third added to the stack fourth frame fifth frame it goes into infinite loop so we are going to break the stack memory and it's going to throw us some error all we have to do is just go to run execute the activity sit and watch so this is going to take lot of time to get executed and this is going to break only when the stack overflows you can also keep an eye here definitely it's going to overflow at a certain point you already see this stack trace now right what you can see here is third activity second activity third activity second activity i already see the frames are added to the stack So I believe this should start with some error, the stack overflow error. Let me go to the first. There is an error for sure, but I like to see more the term as stack overflow. Okay, here you see right, the stack overflow error. So this is the one. It clearly says your stack exceeds. and you can see the stack trace now you see second activity so this is exactly caused at the second activity and then you can also find each of the frames from your stack trace even you see the second activity method and then this calls the third activity so this can go on you will find what are the methods that gets called so this helps with the debugging as well which i will quickly explain now okay now let's get back here so whenever our method invocation it exceeds the stack size we are going to get stack overflow error so whenever you write something just always keep it in mind when you write some recursive activity the loop methods or using some custom java code don't over exceed your method execution or the java method execution right it can lead to stack overflow error okay finally we will also talk about the debugging and error handling now I hope you understood how this stack thing work right now you have the knowledge on all this stack memory so whenever you see something like a frame or some method invocation on the stack you will understand that it is related to the stack memory and the next is this we already saw you can look into the stack trace and then try to identify which method caused the issue right most of the time the method will be like your own pega activity which is responsible so you can easily find the activity behind that as you can see in this picture i see there is an error detected slow component so there is this is out of the box thing and if you look slowly you will find that what are the frames that are added to the stack 
you will see at 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 right so you can slowly go down go down go down and then the top frame will exactly show where the error occurred and you can also see that method invocation history it means it should be from a some action right from some user action so we can trace back and try to get to the last frame they were application methods whatever application activity you are calling so that invokes and then that ended up with the stack error so you can use this stack trace to always debug and pega also by default whenever there is a runtime exception there is some exception it also locks the stack trace that will helps with the debug there are some java methods where you can also do forceful logging of the java stack trace I hope you find this lecture informative and learned a lot about the stack memory. In the next video, we are going to talk about another important memory, heap memory. See you in the next lecture.